In this section, we will focus on the key structural elements of transfer RNA. There are 20 key tRNA molecules within the body, one for each of the amino acids that are encoded into protein synthesis. Most transfer RNA molecules share a highly similar 3D structure as it needs to fit into the active site of the ribosome and dock onto the messenger RNA. Transfer RNAs also have unique elements that help the ribosome and the transfer RNA synthetase enzymes to distinguish between them. This ensures that they are loaded with the correct amino acid. The two-dimensional structure of tRNA is characterized by this cloverleaf pattern. At opposing points is the acceptor stem, where the amino acid will be appended onto the molecule, and the anticodon, which will recognize an hydrogen bond with the messenger RNA. The two side arms have many uniquely modified nucleotides and fold over one another to generate the three-dimensional structure that looks like an L. This places the anticodon down here and the amino acid up here. Major transfer RNA structural variations occur most often in the mitochondrial transfer RNAs. They can look quite different from the ones that are found in the cytoplasm. Modified nucleotides within the tRNA help to aid in the unique folding pattern of the tRNA structure. These modifications often make additional hydrogen bonding or other electrostatic interactions possible. The red regions indicate areas with high modified nucleotides, while the blue areas are more conserved to the traditional bases and tend to form more of a helical type structure in their form. You will notice that the anticodon area is one region that has high modification frequency. This helps to give rise to the redundancy observed in the genetic code. Here you can get a feel for how common these different types of transfer RNA modifications are within the different domains of life. There are modifications that occur commonly in all the domains of life and others that are quite specific for a single domain. These can range from methylation, amination, acetylation, and other more elaborate additions. One major commonality that's found in all domains of life is the inosine base. This is one that you should be sure to become more familiar with. The inosine base is the most common modification located in the anticodon region. It's usually located at the wobble base position, which is the first position of the anticodon and the third base position of the messenger RNA codon. Notice that the inosine base is very similar to the guanosine base. Inosine essentially just has the loss of one amine functional group. The inosine base has a little bit more flexibility than the guanosine base in its movement at the wobble position. This leads to hydrogen bonding with the third position of the messenger RNA codon in unique ways. Here you can see that the inosine base can effectively hydrogen bond with cytosine, adenosine, and uracil bases. When guanine is in the wobble position, it can also bond with uracil as well as the regular cytosine base. Interestingly, adenosine and uracil, when placed at the first position of the anticodon, or the wobble position, they can bind with any of the four nucleotide bases. A, C, G, or U, further expanding the wobble base degeneracy capacity of the transfer RNA molecules. This allows for the flexibility of the transfer RNA molecule to recognize multiple codons and provides the key explanation for the redundancy found in the genetic code. This is known as degeneracy when you can have multiple binding partners for the wobble position base. The codon is said to be degenerate because it will recognize more than one codon encoding for the same amino acid that will be attached to this tRNA at the three prime position. In the next section, we will learn how the tRNAs are loaded to carry the amino acid.